Um, hi Graham, uh, my name is Timbani. Uh, I come from Matibele Land. I'm sure you've met uh, a number of uh, Matibele people. Uh, I'm the 1893 um, uh, Secretary for Information. Um, what we would like to know about you is for you to tell us who you are. Oh, very briefly, I'm the chairman of a group called Nations Without States. Uh, and that basically is a pressure group which is campaigning for the principle of self-determination mm -hmm. as well as providing a platform for everybody that's particularly fighting for that cause uh, in their own country, uh, but often, of course, in diasporas around the world. And, and what's your experiences so far about uh, you know, self-determination -de and, and, and the groups that you work with? Well, self-determination has been around, of course, a long time, ever since man's tried to organise himself. Uh, many have said, well, why can't we determine our own future? Mm -hmm. And of course, many, many years ago, you had feudal kings, whether it was in Africa or whether it was in Europe, yeah. who decided for you. Mm -hmm. But as people became more literate and educated, they decided, no, maybe we know best what's best for ourselves. And of course, uh, in recent times, uh, we had uh, decolonization from empires mm -hmm. on the same principle of self-determination. Uh, but sadly, of course, Self-determination never rang true because you often replace one oppressor with another. Mm -hmm. uh, and many states in Africa and Asia, and increasingly now even back within Europe, people are starting to question whether the state that they are in really represents their interests and their way of being, their culture. So um, I believe there needs to be a second decolonization mm -hmm. uh, around Africa and Asia, but equally maybe a decolonization in Europe as well, depending on whether the people want it. We've heard about Catalonia in recent times, yeah. uh, so they're very ancient uh, uh, peoples. Um, most people think them, they're Spanish, but they have a different uh, um, language mm -hmm. and a different way of life and are very quite distinct. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously in Africa, you had many countries that were states that were formed, uh, but were artificial, they didn't, never existed in history. But because uh, imperial powers went into those areas, they forced peoples together unnaturally. Mm -hmm. And when they left, they left the administrative boundaries in situ. So they created, for instance, Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe never existed in history. Uh, there were a Shona people and a Matabillion people, mm -hmm. but they, of course, they're not the same thing. Do you think that the self-determination, therefore, uh, offers uh, a safety net for uh, the observation or for the respect for human rights. We are a human rights organization. We call ourselves the 1893 and talk about human rights uh, restoration movement. So we need to restore our rights, which are by the, the aspect of colonization have been impinged upon and then the successive governments have done the same. Do you think there is hope for uh, the restoration of, of human rights within the self-determination uh, movement? Well, human rights, you know, one man's human rights is, is not another man's. But in reality, uh, we do claim that there are certain human rights. And even the United Nations in its uh, uh, founding ch uh, charter, chapter one says that self-determination is a human right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it seems it's never acted on. Uh, one reason, I think, is because the United Nations has formed primarily, primarily through uh, United States uh, finance and uh, support. And, of course, it was launched in San Francisco in America. Uh, what they meant by self-determination was decolonization mm -hmm. or the breakup of the European empires because they saw them as a uh, threat. Uh, but despite that, I believe that the principle of self-determination is worldwide, it's global, and it's, it's necessary for everybody. So do you feel that then there's a, a, a hope for uh, uh, you know, self-determination uh, self -determination in, in the future? Do you think nations are going to um, uh, actually achieve this? Uh, well, nations have achieved it, of course. We had South Sudan in recent times, East Timor in the past, Kosovo. There have been new states. There's certainly not less states Mm -hmm. Nobody's wanting to merge. We have the, the EU, but there's been a, a uh, reaction against that about creating new states. 
the only new states people really want to create are new na are nations becoming states. So therefore, there may be 100 to 200 uh, potential uh, uh, states out there based on real nations, not artificial ones, but real ones, that were suppressed over many years, usually by imperial powers and now by uh, majority communities and nations within those territories. But I do think there is a uh, great hope. I think history, the tide of history is turning uh, mm -hmm. back towards self-determination. We've had it before, after the First World War, mm -hmm. under the United States President Woodrow Wilson. He mm -hmm. talked about self-determination. Mm -hmm. And many countries were formed in Europe on that basis. Czechoslovakia being one, Poland being another. And obviously since then, uh, they've uh, become more uh, nation states. For instance, the Czechs and the Slovaks mm -hmm. are now divided. Yeah. I don't see any wars between them. There's no problem. Mm -hmm. It's just a natural way. So I think things are moving towards uh, uh, more nation states, not less. Uh, but you just have to persevere. Yeah. And, and we realize that most of these nations, which are sort of nations, we say nations without states, as you, you call yourselves, they have suffered a lot of genocide. What's, what's your view on the issues of genocide? Well, genocide is a complicated description because uh, most people see genocide as a physical uh, murder of mm -hmm. a people. Mm -hmm. And of course it is. But uh, scholars uh, uh, see genocide as more than just that. It, you can have a genocide of your culture, mm -hmm. genocide of your people. Yeah. You can have a, a selective genocide. It was an attempt to kill a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. It may not lead to mass extermination, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still genocide. Um, and we and demographic genocide, mm -hmm. where for instance, when a peoples are pushed out of their own areas and territory yeah. Yeah. and other peoples are put in deliberately in order to uh, make you a minority in your own uh, natural or historical territory. Mm -hmm. So genocide comes in many guises. Mm -hmm. uh, some of course sadly in the physical guise people being murdered. I know that the Matabeles uh, suffered that in the 80s under yeah. the Mugabe regime. Yeah. Um, but there's been many other oppressions uh, since then as well. Mm -hmm. on a, um, you may call it a lower level, but mm -hmm. cultural genocide and oppression. 